So what this article is about is MIT has a lab called the Dream Lab, which is working on a glove-like device called Dormio that can track and interact with your dreams. So basically, Dormio detects when you're in the first moments of sleep, which is called hypnogagia, which is the state when you're just slipping into sleep and I guess more susceptible to prompts. And when it detects that you're in that state, it'll give you a pre-recorded audio cue. So in the case of this experiment, they used just the word tiger. And what they found was that in a 50-person experiment, some large percentage of them actually ended up dreaming about tigers subsequently. Um, the bigger idea here is that researchers think that instead of just exploring the role of dreams, they can actually see if they can interfere with them. Mm. When I first read this, the lyric case is cool. But what stood out for me was when they reminded me that we spend one third of our lives sleeping. So if you could get more use out of the time or do interesting things in that time, you know, maybe you're reclaiming this whole giant part of your life. Um, question to you guys, any initial thoughts? Is this another example of humans just trying to over-optimize our lives or could this unlock a whole new world? Yeah. Us? My, my knee-jerk reaction was like, maybe this is a good time to respond to email. Um, like just if there's a way to actually actually do that, uh, that that might be efficient. Um, beyond that, it would be it'd be kind of a, a fun like um, wellness angle. Like I, I don't think dreams actually mean anything, but if they did, it'd be interesting to like meet with your therapist and and, and talk talk about your dreams like from like a, a data perspective. Maybe it's like a new wellness category. Uh, Peter and, and Kira probably know better about that than I do, but kind of Diedrich thoughts. Yeah, I think. Um... I actually have this experience that sometimes I'll wake up and I think I've solved a problem in my sleep. I'll have some clarity on it. So I think if there was a way, I think of investing, like focusing on problems and, and those are where the big opportunities are. So if there was a way to tap into certain types of problems, um, that would be interesting. I'm, I don't know, like to honestly, even work related problems, sometimes I'll, I'll work through. So I, I think there's a way to be verticalized there. I felt that thought, woke it up, we're like, oh my God, I just solved the biggest problem ever. But I, I never know what the problem, the solution was. Have you ever actually latched on to the solution or is it just that feeling of having solved something big? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's a little bit of um, what Stephen was saying where it's like I simulated a conversation about a topic <sighs> and it's not that I wanted to be dreaming about it, but I actually had clarity. It's like I experienced it almost. So it was, it's, it's fascinating. It happens to me sometimes. <laughs> I think Thomas Edison used to actually do that, like in a lucid state. He'd hold like steel balls when he fell asleep, and then as soon as right. he thought of his idea, he would like it, like he dropped the balls because he was kind of getting past lucid state, and they'd like write down his idea. So I think this has been been kind of happening in an analog form for for some time. Yeah, totally. There's a, a, a terrible '80s movie called Dreamscape. Anybody here see this? <laughs> yeah. Remember, it's like Dennis Quaid, and he has to like. He can get into other people's dreams and he yeah. has to like help the president of the United States who's having nightmares. It's like, they don't make these kinds of movies anymore. <laughs> um, maybe for both good and bad reasons. But, um, you know, I, I, I think, um, uh, you know, there is a lot of, um, there are people who can do lucid dreaming where they're able to recognize that they're in a dream. And I think that, you know, um, getting people to recognize that they're in that state is really hard. And, um, you know, it sounds like if you can develop tools and better ways to get people to at least um, recognize that, you know, get them into a lucid, you know, state. I mean, the thing that like, um, I always, the thing that I was told is like, you can't read a clock in a dream. Yeah. Um, and also like, if you try to do anything on your phone in a dream, you can't get anything done. You can't like type the right words in or anything. And so that is like a, a signal. If you like start to like, you know, train yourself, like in your waking state to like look at clocks. Um, I heard hands maybe, as well. Yeah. yeah and and hands, it's yeah. also like the tiles on your floor. I, I like yeah. looked into this when I was in college. Actually, I just tried to do it. But I'm sorry. I was reading about it today. <laughs> I texted my girlfriend and I was like, we need to learn how to lose a dream. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like Inception, right? Or um, yeah. you guys have seen the movie Waking Life where he's just trapped in this dream and has these fascinating conversations. Yeah. Are there other industries where we could see benefiting from this technology? I mean, we've seen a lot of new mental health things popping up with all kinds of crazy new therapies that maybe people hadn't thought of before. There's like Mind Bloom doing ketamine, which like maybe five years ago would have seemed crazy. Um, do you think there's potential for this kind of technology coming into the mental health space or maybe even education and training or 
you know, the Thomas Edison example, creativity and design, right? Will we get all of our creative directors to work in their sleep instead of during the day? Or, or maybe getting over like fear. I, I don't know. Like if you're able to like incept spiders, if you had like arachnophobia, that might be kind of interesting too. I honestly think that'd be like I guess night terror. Helping people get better sleep, I think, would be enough. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the fi- like we to- we have plenty of problems. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the thing we're all the tired. Market, totally. There's a sleep app a friend of mine has called Sleep, and it's optimizing when should you nap? What's the right amount of time to get uh, sleep per per evening? Right. So I feel like sleep on its own is massive. Um, I agree with that one. I mean, That's a good point. I used to, I, I was a sleepwalker. I was a kid. Um, mm. so I, have par- I have parasomnia and my sleep cycles are out of order. Um, and so uh, I stopped sleepwalking in my 20s, but uh, for the most part. Um, but it's like, re- it's really, I still have like, you know, like very disorienting sleep experiences. Uh, and uh, certainly like if there were better tools for managing that, I would use them. I've had to like totally clean up my sleep hygiene to like now I can sleep properly. But, um, you know, it's a real problem. And I think people, you know, are, I mean, before all this, I think everyone was like in this country was just really tired. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I think that's, uh, you know, not to like reduce, um, the fact that like people are so terrible to each other to like any one cause, but I think that like people are irritable. And I think that, um, I think that everyone, most people in this country are not sleeping enough. Totally. Like seven hours Agreed. is actually like barely the minimum that you should be getting. Okay, we will move on to our first cartoon. Cartoonist, you want to share your screen and show us what you got? Yeah. Hi. One second. There it is. I feel like this is a good headline for cartoons. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Can you guys see this? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Here's one. Uh, idea two. He forgot to wear pants even in his uh, controlled superhero dream. (laughs) (laughs) I censored it right there. (laughs) That's a censor bot. Um, And lastly, that is what you spoke of, dreaming about dreaming and sleeping. (laughs) That's awesome. All right, we'll move on to next headline. 